Our country's had many a drought in the past recent years. Most prevalent right now is in the Western Cape. How is the farming industry in the Western Cape and around the country dealing with our droughts? In the Western Cape, obviously, they had a devastating effect. You look at, for example, at the at the recent numbers on the production down the wheat down by roughly 21 percent on a year-on-year -year basis, and it's a double-digit decline. Also, if you were to look at the table grape, what is expected there on a the wine grape, palm fruits, so it's really uh, not a good picture. And obviously, if you look at the drought policy brief by the Bureau for Food and Agriculture Policy, as well as the guys at the department there, they're estimating that roughly about 30,000 jobs will pretty much be lost. But if you had to look at the value on a monetary perspective, roughly around about 5.9 billion rands of value that actually will be wiped up because of the drought. So it hasn't been a good period uh, for, for that particular province. But we are seeing some light at the end of the tunnel. It seems that they might be getting some good rainfall this year. If that materializes, then it might be better. But it's still early, it's estimates. We're just hoping that we do get there. Mm. And what kind of effect is this now going to have on the grape industry in particular? The decline in output, that's what will actually be happening. Uh, we'll be watching now the, the figures on a, wine, on, on a wine production, on how much that will actually be. But our hope now is that if the global prices remain at relatively higher levels, that might be better in compensating for the value. But obviously, if you're an export-driven industry, you do get also a bit of uh, the rent strengthening. So it doesn't really help much for those guys at the moment because the rent has gained some ground. But we will see what will actually be happening. But the value uh, on a production side, the volume on a production side has declined, but we'll see what the next season will look like. Let's discuss the land reappropriation without compensation bill and how it's been accepted and dealt with by the farming industry. Right now it's still obviously a, a pronunciation that has been made up. Mm -hmm. Nothing has actually been uh, done uh, as so far. The proposal is to change the constitution and adopt that. Uh, but so far that hasn't really been accepted and I don't think that it should be something that should be supported because of the negative economic effects that it could ally with. I don't think that it would serve us very well to take that route. I think there are much better routes that we could follow to effect land reform without actually causing negative effects. And I think the ruling party does speak to, to, to some extent that they say whatever they do with land reform not negatively affect the economy, the food system. So I think if we go forward, we perhaps take a different approach. We don't really go as far as to change the constitution. We could do better. And I think that if they are forced to expropriate land, but with just an equitable compensation for whatever improvements made on a farm, the current constitution, our legal guys tell us we can move around and we can still do that. And it hasn't been proven that it really does block you to do that. So the argument is you can do all that you you want to do within the current framework. So we worry a lot about the, 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 the property rights because that is the key to prosperity because that's what really talks to investments and then if there's investments there's growth. But throughout all of these consultations which will be happening, we're hopeful that maybe some bit of light will actually come to the fore and we might end up not really taking a, a downward step but rather taking a much more progressive route which will be beneficial for both industry, the new beneficiaries and everybody in the country. Now your chambers proposed a way to adopt it. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about that? No, I mean the chamber obviously is thinking also mm -hmm. about saying, okay, let's not stay on the side and say we don't want the expropriation, but we rather want a much better way to effect land reform. Chamber is working with the bank association on some of these things where they come up with the model somewhat similar to what the national development plan is actually having, where you have a both private sector as well as a government participation, and obviously it will involve some bit of finance that maybe the lending that will come from the private sector side as well as some funds that will come from the government side. But all of that will need to follow a much more direct and rigorous uh, steps on making sure we work on their beneficiary selections. But I think more broadly speaking that government policymakers should be open to some of these systems which will take input from both sides if we are to lean and actually make sure that we have a, a much more uh, successful uh, program. And then finally, are you going to NAMPO this year? Yeah, I mean, Nampu is always an exciting place to be in. Uh, you have all of the new technologies that are being showcased, but not only that, the conversations that gets to happen in that ecosystem, either it's policy related, either it's technological development. So we are I'm looking at attending that. It's a place to actually be and to interact and make sure that uh, you get all the insights necessary for driving the sector forward.